here today. our announcements, Sister Spaulding. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for her as she comes. God bless you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord, everyone. I'm going to try to get out of your way quickly. Uh, first, we'd like to add to the funeral arrangements for Deacon Jewel Stafford. That's the brother of Sister Ada Smith and Evangelist Carolyn Loudon. The visitation is Tuesday, September the 19th from 6 until 9 p.m. at Lively Stone Apostolic Church of God, uh, 216 Hopkinsville Road in Nortonville, Kentucky. The homegoing service is Wednesday, September the 20th at 11 a.m. again at Lively Stone. And we're asking that you please keep the Stafford family lifted in prayer. Amen. Amen. This is a thank you. Thanks to all the culinary staff for all of your help and uh, making the minister's brunch a success. Remember, there is no I in team. We need each other, and that is for Minister Long. Can we say amen? amen. Beautiful job. We're asking that all ushers please meet with Sister Trey Bue after morning service. All ushers. And then we come to the council. As we know, the council begins on this week. This Tuesday, September the 19th through the 23rd, that Saturday, will be our fall council session. The first apostolic council of Kentucky and Tennessee. The location, we're thankful, is right here in Louisville. We don't have to travel, amen? Right here in Louisville, it's, amen. It's gonna be at Christ Temple, that's 723 South 45th Street. And on Tuesday night, Bishop Tim Johnson will be the speaker, and the Greater Bethel Temple Men's Choir will be ministering. Amen. And those, amen. Those men that are singing on Tuesday, please see Elder Briscoe after service. On Wednesday at 10.30 a.m. in the morning, our pastor, Bishop Rader Johnson, will be part of a panel discussion. Amen. It's the modern apostolic church being malnourished. And then on the uh, Wednesday night, the speaker is District Elder Larry Smith of Dixon, Tennessee. Amen. The Thursday night speaker, District Elder Yolanda Hunt. The Council Women's Choir will be singing. And there is rehearsal for the Women's Choir here at Greater Bethel on tomorrow at 6.30. Again, the Women's Choir will, re will rehearse here at Greater Bethel 6.30 on tomorrow night. And Friday, of course, the speaker is our diocesan. Bishop Sherman Marion. Amen. 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 The Greater Bethel Temple Mass Choir will be singing. And the council concludes on Saturday with the Christian Education Department and the Young People's Service, service on Saturday night. So please keep all of that in mind. And amen. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Yes, so thank you. Sister Spalding, and yes, we do appreciate the dining room staff, the newly formed dining room staff, and newly formed kitchen staff. Uh, Sister Kathy Mitchell is uh, heading the dining room staff. We separated them, the two different uh, departments, and of course, uh, Minister Long uh, is uh, heading the uh, kitchen. Uh, when we met with the newly kitchen staff, um, I told them it's not so much that Sister Long is your boss, but I'm just holding her responsible for everything. <laughs> if anything go wrong, I'm gonna come to her. So make her look good. And you all did that on yesterday. Everything was wonderful. Amen. Sister Kathy did a fine job. And of course, if you want to get on the culinary staff, is that what it's called? Well, that word makes it seem like they can really cook. Well, they can. The culinary staff, if you would like to get on the culinary staff or the dining room staff, uh, you can see Sister Long and Sister Kathy Mitchell. Amen. We can use all the help we can get. Can we say amen? Amen. amen. As the Lord blesses the church and as the church grows, because it is growing and it's going to grow even more. Amen. Praise the Lord. Um, we will need more help. Now, we need to establish a, um, a uh, setup and takedown crew. Praise the Lord. And I have personally nominated all the brothers for that. Hallelujah. Amen. 
Amen. All the brothers will be part of the setup and takedown crew. Say setup, takedown. Because if there's anyone that knows how to build up something, there's a man. And if there's anybody know how to tear down some stuff, I can't get no help up in here. Amen. As a man, can we say? <laughs> God bless you. All right, we want to have some words from our good friend, Elder Jonathan Shivers. Amen. He has driven all the way from Ypsilanti, Michigan. It's almost six hours to come down and fellowship uh, with us. We're so happy to have him. He has a beautiful testimony as to how God saved him. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand again as he comes. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'm giving honor to the Spirit of Christ and who's the head of my life. Just pray, thank and praise the Lord for another day. Amen. Bishop Johnson, he always changed the story when he says something. I drove, I was driving an hour and 45 minutes one way to Bishop, Bishop Johnson's church when I got married. And then I started working afternoons and my wife was driving down and she was getting tired, had to pull over and go to sleep. So I said, well, baby, we got to find a closer church. And so we, I talked to Bishop Johnson, moved my membership closer to where we lived. And so, but you know, the scriptures say, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. You know, I'm gonna bless the Lord at all times because I thank God for what he's done for me. You know, I had a, a close cousin that was killed. I was 11, he was 14 and 1974, from 1974 till February 22nd, 84, it was the darkest years of my life. I was a well-dressed, no good crook, I was on my way to prison, but you know what? Uh, my brother was saved, and I, I dodged my brother. If I saw him in the mall, I dodged him. I didn't go to his house. When he come to my mama's house, I go out the back door because I didn't want to hear nothing about God. But you know what? God has a way of breaking you down. God, God will break you down all the way down to your knees. Amen. So God broke me down. You know, I was at college selling, selling weed, and, and somebody, they slipped a Mickey in my drink. And, and end up dropping out of college, coming home and, and joined the Baptist church and, and, and the, the, went to talk to the pastor. He was smoking in his office. And, and, and so I said, I left out of there and I went home and I got a book in the mail called Power for Living. And my favorite basketball player was on there, Dr. J. And Dr. J said he accepted Christ as a savior. And something said, go ask your brother what that means. Went to my brother's house at 1130 at night. My brother got home at about a quarter, quarter to 12 and asked me, he said, look, bro, what are you doing over here? I said, what does it mean to accept Christ as your Savior? He, he began to witness to me about the Godhead, about the baptism in Jesus' name. And about, about 12, 15, I said, can I get baptized tonight? So they opened the church up at 12 o'clock at night, baptized me in Jesus' name on a Wednesday morning and got filled with the Holy Ghost that, that, that evening. And I thank God I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue to be in my mouth. I thank him for saving my soul, taking me off drugs, keeping me from going to prison. How will you got to praise God? God has been too good to you not to praise him. I'm going to praise him in the morning. I'm going to praise him at noonday. I'm going to praise him all the time. I'm going to give him the praise because he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's real. It's real. Hallelujah. Yes, all. Glory. Glory, glory. We're going to have to have. We're going to have to have Elder Shivers back. Elder Shivers. Elder Shivers has a lot of powerful testimonies. A lot of powerful testimonies. So we're going to have him back here. Amen. He has a lot of powerful testimonies. God has done some great things for him. I think he testified one time. He went to the doctor and the doctor says, was your kidneys? His kidneys was functioning at 50%. And he went and prayed, said, now, Lord, the Bible says you a healer. I read all of the scriptures that yeah, I need you to do something for me. He went, he went back to the doctor. The doctor said he's operating at what, 99%? <laughs> oh, 
Oh yeah. So he's got it. Now, now that's me telling his testimony. If he wants to tell you some of his testimonies, amen, we shout all over this place. This is a good brother. Good brother, dear brother, we love him. Amen, close to our family. Amen, he was with us when Daniel passed away. Amen, and of course, uh, we thank God. Uh, it's good to have some good saved friends. It's good to have some people to encourage you to do the right thing. Encourage you to pray. Amen. We're reading the Bible straight through together. And uh, I was beating him pretty good for a while. And I don't even want to talk about it now. I had every excuse in the world why I wasn't as far as he is. <laughs> but he is a good man. His wife's a beautiful woman. And we thank God uh, for them. All right, well, we're going to have the Brotherhood Choir come with the final selection. I think that's where we are. Is that right? Hey, I mean, we're moving kind of fast, aren't we? That's good, isn't it? You don't want to be in church all day? <laughs> God bless you. So under the direction of the maestro Kirby Aloysius Johnson, coming to direct the choir, direct. He does it all. God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand, Brother Kirby. Amen. I was talking to a sister from Sebastian, Florida, and she uh, watches us online all the time. We've sent her CDs out, and she says, I'm praying for you, Bishop, praying for your family, and I'm praying for Brother Kirby. I said, how you know Kirby? <laughs> God bless you. Come on, give the Lord a hand. God bless you. By the way, that is not my middle name. <laughs> Trust that. Thank you. 
Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Ah, come on, give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Come on, stand to your feet. Tell the Lord to search it. Search me, Lord. 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 Try my heart. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Come on, tell him today. Search my heart. Search my mind. Search my soul. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want to be whole. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. You know, Lord. You know, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You know, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Search me, Lord. Shine your light from heaven on my soul. Find anything that shouldn't be. Take it out. Just take it out, Jesus. Just take out that bad attitude. Take out the most stubborn ways. Find anything that shouldn't be. I can't find it, but I know you can find it. Take it out and straighten me. Hallelujah. I want to be right. I want to be saved. I want him to look at me and say, Has thou considered my servant? Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Well, we come to the most important part. It is the most important part. The word of the Lord. How many of y'all came to hear from God today? I said, How many of y'all came to hear from God today? Well, he's got something for you. Amen. This man is one of the greatest men in Pentecost today. Amen. He is known all throughout all Pentecost. And we are grateful and privileged to have him. It has been an honor to have him and his wife. Amen. I've been spending some time talking to him. Somebody told me that the fathers were gone. No, they're not. We got Bishop Clifton Jones. Amen. And I thank God for him. I know he's no stranger here. It's my first time actually getting the chance to actually sit down and talk with him. Uh, one thing about Bishop Jones is that he treats everybody the same. I talked with him at one convention 
for a few minutes. I said, which one of these books I should buy? He said, all of them. <laughs> and then I saw him the following year, and he talked to me as if we just talked yesterday. I thank God for him. He's been a blessing to me personally. He's been a blessing to many of you individually, and he's been a blessing over the years to this church. Yes. Praise the Lord. And so let us all stand as we receive this great man of God. We want to encourage you, please, no walking. Amen. God has something special for you. No walking unless it is absolutely necessary. Amen. The Lord has something special for you. And if you are not saved, I can't think of a better day. Amen. To be able to testify and say, I got saved when Bishop Clifton Jones came and preached. Isn't that, wouldn't that be something? <laughs> Hallelujah. We already have some that got saved when he was here before. Amen. And so it is my honor and distinct privilege to present to you the man of God for this time. Amen. In these last days, Bishop Clifton Jones. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand for him as he comes. Thank you, Brother Pastor. And since we are standing, let's locate Revelations chapter number two. And thank you, musician. You, I know you can play. At some point, it's going to sound like I'm preaching, but please don't help me. <laughs> please don't help me. I didn't learn how to preach while they play. I didn't learn how to do that. So and I'm too old to be trying to learn some new stuff. Amen. I thought I'd get that out the way. Because sometimes uh, you have to do it in the middle of a, of a sentence. I would take time and elaborate on two songs I heard that conveys a message. Satan is on my track. And that's a good thing. Because even the devil don't chase stuff that he's already got. Um, and search my heart. Only true believers pray such a prayer. A hypocrite see more than he or she is willing to deal with. A pretender don't want to have what's wrong with him or her uncovered. So only one that's sincere would pray, search my heart. A pastor, I'm going to say this. Don't tell anybody you heard me say this. That portion about if you find anything that shouldn't be, take it out. I want to help you there. He will find it, but he will not take it out but he will give you the ability to get rid of it. Yeah. Oh, uh, Revelation chapter two, the first five verses. I don't normally have long texts, but this is Sunday, and uh, this is the last service for today. Uh, people stop having night service because they had trouble seeing how to get back to church. <laughs> and, uh, So while you're here, I may as well to unload. And I command you right now, do not walk out on me. Shall we all read together, beginning with verse 1, shall we read? Unto the angel of the church at Ephesus write, These things said he that hold the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, 
I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do thy first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of this place except thou repent. Father, if you would help us to receive that portion that would transform our lives and send us from this place better equipped to better serve you. We'll give you thanks. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you as you're seated. Thank you, Pastor, for allowing me to come in the house. And uh, I, don't, I don't like to leave it to people to figure out something. I'm here, I want to help somebody. I want to help somebody. I don't care who that body is, but I want to help somebody. If I fall short in helping you, you can rest assured that was not my intention. I want to use a subject that I think this text is suggesting a case for revival. A case for revival. <laughs> you don't have to tell me, I'm, I mentioned it on one service since I've been here. The word R E V I V A L is not found in the New Testament. You find it in several passages in the Old Testament. The main reason I use the word case because it comes and picks up and makes clear what may not be noticeable or visible in the outset. Revival is the thing I'm emphasizing. Why? Because it is what we need. Why? Because of where we are. Why? Because of what got us to where we are. Why? We are not effective where we are as we would be if we were where we should be. So revival is God's vehicle to come to the low place where we've allowed ourselves to sink, pick us up and take us back to where we ought to be so we can get busy carrying on our assignment laid upon us by the Holy Ghost. So when I looked at, at, at the text, notice there are two major things in that text. One, there is a compliment. And you know, most people love compliments. <laughs> John, don't say that. Yeah, go ahead and say it. Uh, since the women outnumber men, women can know you lying. You're lying through your teeth. But what you're saying enhances how they feel to such a degree they want you to keep lying. I'm sorry. Some women, normal women. <laughs> he compliments the church. He tells you, I know who you are. I know where you are. I know what you've done. I know how you stuck with what you're doing. I know how your discernment works. You found folks that said they was one thing. You found them to be like. I know all that. I know it. But in spite of your ability and your diligence and your consistency and your steadfastness, I got something against you. That's a complaint. And I like how he does that. He first compliments.
compliments them. <laughs> Take your time, Joan. Take your time. Don't get in a hurry. Because they're not going anywhere after this is over but find a dead chicken. A case for revival. For the sake of repetition, the nine of you that heard me on Friday night, revival is not a general meeting, a scheduled meeting. Revival is not about some big mouth preacher from Mississippi coming in, swooping, hollering, spitting, and stomping. It is about an encounter of the soul of an individual with an holy God that wakes up everything that has gone to sleep in the individual, put him or her back in notice, recharge, revive, restores, refresh, renews, reinvigorates, re-excites stimulates, motivates, encourage, inspire, lift up, uh -huh, and lead out of a rut to a place of ecstasy, glory, praise, adoration, and glory be to God. That person been revived. A cold person cannot and will not praise God with freedom. A cold person cannot and will not praise God with freedom. A cold person cannot and will not praise God with freedom. But a person who is delivered will open his or her mouth and magnify God to such a degree that everybody will know something has happened. Sister so Joan, they're going to run off and leave, man. <laughs> A case for revival. Dictionary.com, some of you met him. So the case is the actual state of a thing. Did you get that? So when we read that text, that text conveyed information to describe a situation and a condition that the people, the church was in. This is not to the center, this is to us. See, we need to stop giving the center our stuff and, and take our own medicine. Don't expect to get well giving your medicine to somebody else. I know where you are. I know what's going on. And I also know you don't feel about me like you did when you first started. You don't have that desire for me that you had when you first come in here. You're not moved by me as you were when you first come in here. You're not thrilled about me like you were when you first come in here. I got that against you. And the only way for you to get back like you were, you got to be revived. Pastor gave me a towel. He figured I was going to press by. <laughs> the actual state of a thing. If I would pause now and go down each row per individual and ask him or her, what state are you in? No one knows better than us where we are as in reference to where we were. See, you don't need a preacher to tell you that your fire is not burning like it once did. You don't need a preacher to tell you you're not as enthusiastic about God as you once were. Yeah, your light is not shining as bright as it once did. Uh -huh. Your appetite is not in pursuit of God like you once were. And honey, I got news for you. It is that kind of mindset that causes you to start doing a survey of your own situation that bring you to the place where something down inside of you that start crying out, God, don't leave me where I am, God. Don't leave me in this condition, God. Don't let me remain asleep, God. Give me back my joy, God. 
move down inside of me, God. Praise up everything that is falling in me. God, draw me nearer to your precious bleeding side. Oh, God, stand up in me. Stretch out in me. Walk around in me. Make yourself at home in me. I belong to you. And if anybody needs you, I do. If anybody wants you, I do. If you can help anybody, you can help me. Help! Slow down, John. Hmm. The actual state of things. It's something our text said that all of us ought to pay attention to. He said, I know your works. That within itself said I'm still busy. <laughs> go, to, go to your job tomorrow and your supervisor now, we're working this week but no one is going to be paid. Somebody will find a reason to find the exit. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why is it we have a feeling toward things but act as if God has no feelings at all? You think the Lord brought us out of the mess we were in for us to do nothing? <laughs> You think he paid that supreme price so you and I could just be decoration in a building called church? It got to be something he want from us. He don't want me preaching and don't have a relationship with him. Why should I talk about him and don't even know him? Why should I represent him and can't even feel him? Oh God, revive me. Oh God. Mm. Let me finish that, uh, that uh, definition from dictionary.com case. Now, if you thought actual state was good, the, the next part of that said a person or thing whose plight or situation calls for attention. My elder sister told me how she prayed when I was a little sick kid. She wanted God to kill me to get me out of my misery. I told her God pays no attention to ignorant prayers. <laughs> he knew what he had in mind for me. Hallelujah. The same little old boy that they thought was dying in 1946. They came to school at midday in 46 to get me from school. I never returned to school to 47. Hallelujah. I was just that sick. But I got news for you. I'm not sick now. But I, but I, I needed attention. There may be one or two in here whose spirit needs attention. Sl slow down, Jones, and take your time. One that is notice when I come to church, I'm not really happy in church. I'm wondering what's going on outside of church and glad when they dismiss church. I find myself sitting up here in body, but my mind is miles away. I find when I sing, I don't feel what I sing. I'm clapping, but I'm just going through the motion. Now I believe that big mouth preacher from Mississippi is trying to tell me, I just just need reviving. I didn't come in here cold like this. I wasn't dry when I came in here. I wasn't listless when I came in here. I wasn't downcast when I came in here. I wasn't busted and disgusted. 
spiritually in prison. I came in here speaking in tongues, running the aisle, raising my hand, and blessing God. I will not be satisfied in the condition I'm in. I got to get mine back. Anybody else want to keep what you got, you go ahead. But I got to get back what I had. And if anybody can do it, he can. I'm going to call him right now. something better I'm gonna holler help as long as I can help help my mind help my attitude help my disposition help my outlook help my intake help my appetite help me to get hungry one more time help me to get my joy back help me to get back on the right track help me to fire up Help, Lord, before I lose my mind. Help, Lord, before I lose my direction. Help! Oh, my, my mind, my mind went to Psalms 137. The writer said, by the river of Babylon, we sat down. There we wept when we remember Zion. And they that carried us away captive, they said to us, sing us one of Zion's song. And that man said something that brings to my attention when you're not where you belong, you can't sing like you want song. You can't do what you once did. Uh -huh. He said, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? When you get too far from him, you lose your song. When you get too cold on him, you lose your song. When you get too much unlike him, you lose your song. When you get too involved in this world, you lose your song. Somebody ought to pay attention to where you are right now in the light of where you were. If you don't like what you see, you need to get on the line and call him up. Jesus, I'm calling you. If anybody needs you, I sure do. Jesus, if you ever help anybody, you can help me. Jesus, I don't mean next year. I want you to help me now. I don't mean the next meeting. Help me right now. Help. The text, the text suggests that conditions have reached a state that it needs attention. I know you're working. You're busy. God help us busy saints. Help us. Some of us too busy to think about God, spend time with God, truly represent God. We're just so busy. And the more folks compliment us, the busier we get, and the farther we get from the real purpose of our service. See, uh, you notice, I took my time before I start calling myself preaching to let you know what I'm preaching for. I'm trying to help somebody. I ain't up here trying to entertain your brain. I'm trying to help you. There's something in you that need awakening. I'm trying to find how to wake it up. I don't want you to walk out like you walked in. No, no, no. I don't want you to go away from here in the condition you came. I want the light to come on inside of you. And so I took a look at where I am. I'm not today where I was a few days ago. There's some things I'm allowing that I used to not allow. There's some feeling that I'm tolerating I used to rebuke. There's a coldness that is 
set in that I would not stand. But I need help. That's what's wrong with me. And I want to get it while I'm here. Lord, don't go past me trying to get to somebody else. I need help. Lord, don't overlook me. I need help. Lord, don't disregard me. I need help. Lord, don't count me out. I need help. Sister Jones, you all right? I'm not used to you sitting that far back. <sighs> Baby, we pay much more attention to our rotten bodies than we do our souls. Well, I ain't, I ain't going to church tonight. The day my, my rheumatism is flaring up. There's nowhere in the Bible that said, Thou shalt not go to church when thy rheumatism flares up. <laughs> I ain't going, I got a headache. Bring your headache to church. The best place to take your headache is to the house of God. Said God, if you ever heal anybody, you can stop my head from hurting. <laughs> Whatever wrong with me, you can make it right. Whatever is gone away from me, you can bring it back. Whatever has died in me, you can resurrect it. Whatever has gotten cold in me, you can warm it up. Whatever has gotten blind in me, you can open up your sight. God, I came today because I need help. I didn't just come because this is Sunday. All of you that are here because this is Sunday and you always go to church on Sunday, you might walk out like you walk in but if you get home and say God I need help I need you to do something for me I need my soul revived <laughs> let me let me hurry up and start closing well see it takes me longer to close than it does some people so I better start <laughs> Look, when I go back to my text, it said, I know your works, your labor. It was ongoing. He had no problem with their work. But in his complaint, it was their love, your affection. See, you're not doing it for the right, right reason. If you're singing because you've got a good voice, that's pitiful. But if you're singing to glorify the God whom you serve, that's important. And preachers, let me say this. Don't ever waste your time trying to learn how to out-preach anybody. Because if you do, you're in the flesh. Hallelujah. Learn how to communicate the word of God in a manner that will help people's soul. God, I want to see folk come alive. I'm tired, I, I, I'm tired of holding service in the morgue. Did y'all hear that? I'm tired of going to wakes. I want to go to a joyous resurrection service. I've already quoted this scripture, not today, but I quoted it either yesterday or day before. And I'm saying this because the three of you that heard it and remembered, I don't want you to say, oh, he already said that. He, if you know it, I probably know it too. But Psalms 142 and verse 7 said, bring my soul out of prison. See, I don't know how many of you have been to jail, but when you go to peeping, I don't know how jails are made anymore. It's been a while since I've been in one. When you get to peeping through those bars, you see things on the outside that you would like to get involved in, but between you and what's out there are bars and you can't get out. A lot of folk got invisible bars. They can't worship like they ought to. They can't praise them like they should. They, they can't get loose like they will to feel to do because they are in prison. But I promise you if you get revived, your soul will come out of prison. When that thing begins to click inside of you, you don't need somebody to tell you he's moving because you yourself know I feel something moving. I feel now like I did before. I'm going to open my mouth wide. I'm going to bless while I live, I'm going to let him know you're worthy, you're worthy, you're worthy. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, Lord, Lord. What 
you say, Lord, you left your first love. May I say to me, as I talk to you, that risk I run in not having affection and love for God, I tend to put something in the place he once occupied. And something I seek to replace him with is detrimental to my welfare. And pretty soon I start corrupting and decaying and getting farther and farther from the truth. And next thing I know, I start justifying what I do to not make it appear so wicked. Uh -huh. All the time, I'm getting out of the God business, but still, I'm stepping up in the pulpit and preaching uh -huh, and sweating, but I don't feel that love that I had for God. Shame on me when what I do is more important than who I do it for. Shame on me when I get more excited about my job than I am about the one who assigned me to it. Shame on me when I feel I'm more important than the one I represent. Shame on me when I have lost my contact with the one I represent. Somebody here right now want to say, Lord, as you did in the past, I want you to move in me. I don't want to leave here the way I came. Please, Lord, stir me, shake me, wake me, raise me, draw me. Please, Lord, breathe on me. I know those of you that were here Friday night heard me when I made mention of how God set this thing up and gave us the privilege to call him when we need him. Uh -huh. I didn't complete that. So for the sake of those nine that were not here, you 12 that heard it, just act as if this is the first time you heard it. In Psalm 34 and 15, he said, the eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and his ear is open to their cry. And, 50, and 15, he said, call upon me in the day of trouble, I will deliver you. And I, I don't think I brought in Psalm 91 and 14, uh, because he set his love upon me, therefore will I honor him. I will be with him in trouble. Honey, any time you get that kind of encouragement, even in your trouble, God is there. When things seem impossible, God is there. When the devil is on your track, God is there. Even when they get on your back, God is there. When the darkness come past you about, he's there. So call him when you need him. Don't wait and let the taste be beat out of your mouth. Don't let the devil so discourage you and cause you to hold your peace. Open your mouth and say, oh Lord, I need help, Lord. Psalm 34 and verse number 6 this poor man cried and the Lord heard now if he heard that poor man he'll hear this poor man help Lord help me to get out of myself help Lord help me to get back under the anointing help Lord help me to get my peace back help Lord help me to get my joy back
Joe, you think I ought to start closing? Okay. Before I shut the book, I want you to visit Jeremiah chapter number two. God is always, has always had a message for folk whose love waxes cold. He told Jeremiah, I want you to go talk to my people. What you want me to tell them? I want you to cry, saying to Jerusalem, I remember thee. Look at him, he's complimenting them. I remember you. <laughs> I remember the kindness of your youth. When you first come in, you loved me. You followed me wherever I wanted to take you. I said, go to the wilderness. You went. I took you to a land you didn't even know about. I gave you houses, and all. You, you just followed me. But now you've got too big for your britches. That's a Mississippi term. Right. Sorry, I'm, I'm in Kentucky. You got too big for your britches. Uh -huh. See, somehow you picked up a few things that you thought made you bigger and better, and you got to the place you seem not to know how badly you need me because of so much so many blessings and God delivered me from all these God gonna bless you preachers gonna bless you with a bigger house bless you with a better car bless you with a better job bless you bless you bless you bless you bless you all of it tangible I want somebody to tell me God gonna bless you with spiritual eyes to look inside of your black self and see the mess that's going on and give you a heart to repent that's what I want somebody to tell me about what God gonna do about my soul help me Lord, have mercy. See, some of you old school remember when the church used to sing a song that went something like it. If we ever needed the Lord before, oh, sure do need him now. Oh, if we are. See, but we got away from something. We've got so much stuff, we don't have room for the Lord. And I'm, I'm after those of you that walked in here today just caught the, because it's Sunday. I, I, I guess I'll go to church today. I'm after you. I'm, I want you. Shame on you. You've gotten so much messed up good that you don't realize how bad you need God. You didn't get where you are accidentally. You didn't look upon the position now, yet you now hold. It was of the Lord's mercy that we're not consumed. You owe him a praise from the rising of the sun to the going down of the sun. You owe him a praise. He is worthy. Now they all said that on the boat. Oh, Lord. Oh. Uh. I may not be good at some things, but I want you to make me good at blessing your name. When I think of where I am, and think of where I was, and think about where I could have been, and look at what you've done, I know it wasn't by might or power, but by your spirit. Lord, I just rose up and say, thank you for not leaving me where I was. when he said in verse 5 thus said the Lord what iniquity have your fathers found in me what was wrong with me what made them leave me why did they get cold on me 
I'm talking to those of you that had backslidden but hadn't left the building. What did he do to you? What did he hold back from you? Why you treat him the way you do? Why he doesn't mean any more to you than he does? What's going on with you? Whose fault is it when you call him just because you thought he should have answered one way and he didn't? Uh, it wasn't too late. The fact you were still alive, he had plenty of time. Don't put him in a box. Give him time to do what he does best. God, you just let him know, Lord, if I ever needed help, I need it now. Lord, I'm not just calling because some preachers that call you. I'm calling because I looked at myself. I don't like what I see. I can't afford to stay where I am. I got to get back what I had, and you're the only one that can help me. I'm calling for help. I almost forgot the old men were behind me. One of them made a sound. Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. Help. Help. I'm tired of the valley. Help. I'm tired of dry bones. Help. I'm tired of being cold. Help. I'm tired of being disenchanted. Help. I'm tired of being in a prison. Help. I'm tired of being in a strange land. Help, Lord. If you don't help anybody else, help me. I was teaching Bible class back during my pastoral day, and I said to the church, if you feel the Lord don't see you, or know where you get, ah, oh, get your banner and start waving. I'm over here, Lord. Help him out. Help. 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 Lord, I used to dance for you. But my legs feel as if I got rheumatoid arthritis. Help. I used to clap for you. But now my hands are so heavy, they feel like I got paralysis. Help. I used to open my mouth and bless your name. But it seems like now I got laryngitis. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Move one more time. Help, Lord. Stand up in me. Help, Lord. Stretch out in me. Help, Lord. Walk around in me. Help, Lord. Breathe on me. Please, till I get my joy back. Please, please flood my heart. I said, since I've been here, if he could breathe upon a valley of dry bones and get some action, he shouldn't have any trouble in a Pentecostal charge. I dare you to take your Bible, and, and I'm, I'm going to start thinking about sitting down. I'm t I dare you to take your Bible and just single out, pinpoint the places where he breathed. Starting with Genesis 2, 17, he breathed into a piece of mud, and it became a living soul. Good God Almighty. Then you go over to the book of Exodus, he breathed up on a red sea, and it became dry land. One of the things the church need to do is get God to breathe again. God, you breathe in the upper room and they were all filled. If you breathe in this room, I believe we can all get filled. Breathe, Lord. Breathe till we get our joy back. Breathe till we mount up with wings. Breathe till we walk around fire. Breathe. I was intending to close with Psalms 39, verses 12 and 13. As far as I'm concerned, one of the most revelatory prayers in the Bible that speaks the language of revival. That man said, oh, spare me, that I might recover strength. 
God, I'm not begging for longevity. In fact, I'm not even concerned about when I die. I'm concerned about how. See, the, the when is in your hand, but the how you left to me. See, I don't want to die weak. I don't want to die cold. I don't want to die straddling the fence. I don't want to die looking like it, but not being it. I don't want to die cold as a frog's belly in Alaska. I don't want to die dry as cotton. And you, you, know, you southern northern people don't know anything about the drought and dryness of cotton. So you stop at CVS or Walgreens and buy you a small bag and swallow about 12 balls. You'll find out tomorrow you got revelation because cotton is dry. Uh -huh. Dry as cotton. God, I don't want to die. Uh, I don't want to die a preacher but not in touch and love with you. I don't wanna sing beautiful songs and get other folks happy and I'm sad down inside. Lord, I don't wanna be at the station and miss the train. So uh, I, I want before I go hence and be no more. I know I got to go, but as I look back where I was, that was all right. And when I look at where I am, I don't like what I see. Then I look at where I'm headed, I sure don't wanna go there to where I am. And God, you the only one can help me to turn things around. I wonder if there's anybody here ready to pray that kind of prayer. Oh God, I'm not asking you to let me live like Methuselah, but I want you to let me leave here holy. I want to be clean, sanctified, and pure. I want to be able to hold high the bloodstained banner, represent you in a manner that'll glorify your name. Help me, Lord. Help me not to slide any further back. Help me not to get any colder. Help me not to get any drier. Help me not to get down. Help me not to go down. Help me not to turn on. Help me. You know, it's bad. That poor brother from Mississippi. He's screaming and hollering. You'd almost think God was tired of hearing. He, all you have to do is just Breathe a prayer. <laughs> but I don't mind hollering. Folk get on your nerve, you holler at Fool, what's wrong with you? Hello, <laughs> now my name. You need help. Don't whisper it. Holler. Help. And guess what? Sometimes you got to get away from that help us to help me. Help me. God, the way that big mouth preacher was hooping hard, I didn't feel nothing he was talking about. Help me. I, I don't know as I told this church, I think it's the last church I was in before I got here. I told him, I said, all of us are in the hospital, but we're not all on the same ward. And those of us that's in intensive care, you can't act like a janitor. There's nothing wrong with the genre. They're cleaning up. You're in intensive care. You're about to get some help. Help! God, give me, give me mouth to mouth resuscitation. I ain't breathing like I want to. Come on, Lord. Blow, blow, Lord, until everything in me that's going to sleep wake up. Blow, Lord, until my joy bell start ringing one more time. Blow, Lord, until I get to a place of inspiration and encouragement that nothing can turn me around. But God, I become so bold and courageous that I start singing my own song. Look where he brought me from. Look what he brought me to. Look what he brought me to. Look what he's doing inside of me. He's a wonder. Hallelujah! He's a wonder! Well, brother, you don't really have to be emotional to enjoy the Lord. We pass, what's the name of the stadium where the Cardinals play? What's the name of that stadium? We passed Papa John's four hours before the ball game, and the yard was full of folk. Four hours before the game. I know Louisville scored a time or two, but I promise you, 
when they scored, they didn't have an audience like this. You have to go to church to find folk like that. In the ball game, the more you score, the greater the response from the people. In the church, Jesus hung on the cross, died and rose again, coming back for a church. Oh, but it's time for the church to have a pep rally. Uh -huh. Not only did he hang on the cross, he hung there to keep me from having to hang there. Not only was he dead, but he rolled with power, put hope in my soul. He's coming back to get me. He's worthy. He's worthy. Get ready quick. Musician, you can get ready because I'm getting ready to sing. I'm singing this just for three, for three of us that feel this way. He's the one in my tonight, I'm, I'm sorry, today, this afternoon, and you heard God speak to your soul and say to you, I brought you here today. I want to do something in your soul. Don't hesitate. Come on down now. My soul
this night I cannot live without him no I, I cannot live without him oh, I cannot no, I, I cannot. I really, really cannot. I cannot live without him. 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 Bless his name. No, I cannot live without him. Oh, I cannot live without him. Bless his name. Lord have mercy. He's coming back. Back to get me. Oh, he's coming back. Back to get me. He is coming back. He is coming back. He He's coming back to get me. 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 Bless his name. He's coming back. Back to get me. Eko Torian Nabo. Oh, he's coming back. Back to get me. He is coming back, back to get me. Bless his name. Now, I don't know about you. I have got to. I got to be ready. Oh, I got to. I got to be ready. I have got to. I have got to. I got to be ready. I got to be ready. I got to be ready. Bless his name. I got to be ready. Oh, I've got to. I got to be ready. Oh, I've got to be ready. Bless his name. I don't want him to have to leave me. I don't want him to have to leave me. No, I don't want him. I really don't want him to have to leave me. 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 Bless him. Believe me, I don't want him to have to leave me. Bless his name. 
Aramani Kotoriana. Oh God. Oh God. Come on, somebody else. Come on. Come on to be saved. Come on to be saved. Today is your day. Stretch your hands toward the altar as he prays for Sister Allison. In the name of Jesus. Come on, brothers, help. Stretch your hands toward her in the name of Jesus. Glory. Yes. Hallelujah. Anointing. Fall on me, anointing, fall on me. Come and help me say it today. Come on, help me say it today. Anointing. Fall on me. Come on, somebody. Anointing. Fall on me. Batteries need. Does it work? Let the power of the Holy Ghost fall on me. Anointing. somebody come on somebody come be saved Jesus is calling you let your power Lord let the power of the Holy Ghost Anointing, hey! Anointing, fall on me. Come on, just close your eyes and he'll fall on you. Anointing, fall on me. Anointing, anointing. Somebody, come on. Come on and be saved. Fall on me. Come on, somebody. Let the power of the Lord is calling. Today is your day. On come on, if you want to come back to God. Don't let these words that were preached to you just go through one ear and out the other. You can be saved. You can be free today. Today is your day. Come on. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Anointing. Anointing. Oh. 